The Cummins Case Study is presented by Nick Miller and Cable Calloway. In 2000, the US was suffering from the economic crisis that was the dot-com crash, which affected not just internet companies but the entire economy. The North American diesel market was in a slump. In addition to the slowdown in the heavy-duty engine market was the effect of the 9-11 terrorist attack in 2001, which slowed the US economy even more. These economic downturns have placed pressure on the diesel engine market as a whole, particularly at a time of major change in environmental requirements. In 1998, NOx emissions standard for US heavy-duty on-highway engines had been 10.7 grams per brake horsepower. By 2007, it was 0.2 grams per brake horsepower. Having been told by manufacturers that the 2004 NOx standard would require radical new technology, the EPA published the rule in 1997, providing manufacturers with a full six years to prepare new engines for the standard of 2.5 grams per brake horsepower. In 1997, the EPA learned diesel engines produced different levels of NOx between urban and rural operations due to the onboard electronic fuel injection systems discriminating between urban and rural operations, adjusting the timing of the fuel injection to optimise fuel economy. This led to better fuel economy but worse NOx emissions in rural operation and worse fuel economy and better NOx emissions in metro operations. The EPA determined that this inconsistent behaviour was most likely built into the electronic fuel strategies of all heavy-duty engine suppliers and was considered to be a defeat device. The EPA in 1998 threatened to sue individual engine manufacturers for violating the regulations. Even though manufacturers considered they were in compliance, they agreed to enter a negotiated settlement to avoid long and expensive lawsuits. This resulted in a consent to decree between the EPA, the Department of Justice and individual manufacturers including Cummins. The consent decree included by October 2002 meeting a NOx emission standard that otherwise would have been required by January 2004 called a pull forward. The pull forward requirement again placed pressure on the diesel engine manufacturers at a time in which they were struggling to emerge from two major economic downturns in the North American heavy duty diesel market. Early in 2002, months before the pull forward standards were to take effect, Caterpillar reported that it would not be able to meet the NOx standard on time. The company needed another year to refine its technology. Caterpillar chose to seek a delay in the implementation date and took its appeal to members of Congress, the EPA and the White House and organised a marketing effort to deter customers from buying the new EGR technology claiming it was untested. Non-compliance to the standard meant risk of receiving a non-conformance penalty of up to $12,210 per engine. Environmental groups and state air pollution regulators were not happy with Caterpillar's approach. While Caterpillar would have considered its actions to be reasonable, particularly in the economic climate at the time, Cummins was uniquely positioned to take the contrarian position to Caterpillar and profit from it as well as being a good corporate citizen. The North American heavy duty diesel industry was made up of six suppliers including Cummins. There is potential for new entrants horizontally diversifying from other diesel markets into the heavy duty diesel engine market. There are potentially high startup costs for those entering the heavy duty diesel market, but this cost is lower for those operating in other diesel engine markets. Supplier power is low with the number of competitors in the market, but this could change for suppliers who meet the new emission standards on time before its competitors. Buyer power is strong with customers' ability to select the engine for the truck they purchase. Substitutes for the required engine standards is Caterpillar's bridge engine with improved emissions but not fully meeting EPA standards. Cummins' main competitor, Caterpillar, in not meeting EPA standards has supports from its competitors other than Cummins in delaying the standard. Meeting the EPA standards required considerable R&D and several other resources such as finance, personnel, manufacturing, retooling, supplier development to be done much earlier than the pull forward date. 
Cummins had been investing in air handling, fuel systems, combustion research and electronic control technologies for a long time. The integration of these technologies was required for the development of the EGR solution. Cummins knew the EGR technology would form the basis for even more rigorous NOx reduction in 2007. Consequently, after the consent decree with the EPA, Cummins continued to invest in the technology. Cummins' new CEO Tim Solso's goal was to develop an integrated organisation perspective. This would deliver a single company culture and purpose. Using the gross share matrix, the engine business unit was the star for Cummins with 52% of the organisation's total sales. However, it could potentially also be a significant issue for Cummins' regular financial deficits. Cummins should be careful in adopting an integrated organisation perspective. While it will allow for integration, alignment and synergies, the portfolio organisation perspective provides greater control of cash flow optimisation, risk balance and financial control. These are three key areas that Cummins needs to address. By implementing the EGR technology, Cummins will be able to adopt the outside-in perspective within their business level strategy. Although being driven by the EPA and not the market, Cummins can still leverage the first mover advantage by adopting this strategy. Given Cummins' financial predicaments, the generic competitive advantage Cummins can adopt is the route to product leadership, which requires the value chain to focus on differentiation, state-of-the-art products, innovation and collaboration between marketing and R&D. Currently, Cummins produces products for the heavy-duty trucking industry. The primary segments are long-haul routes, short-haul routes, and consistent good transfer routes. Cummins also produces other products that have a synergy with their heavy-duty engine products, such as exhaust systems, within their filtration business unit. Cummins is struggling with sustaining their competitive advantage in these markets due to competitive dependability. However, the environmental cognizance and the changing government regulations could position the EGR technology as a tool to gain back the advantage. Cummins should also explore alternative industries in both the primary and tertiary sectors where their technology could be used. Such industries could include maritime, trains, mining, factory and defence segments. Cummins' overall performance has had a steady decline each year from 1997 to 2001. The decline in sales growth can be attributed to an oversupply of new and used trucks and a general economic slowdown. To stimulate sales growth, Cummins should remove their underperforming products, focus on a niche market through market adaptation and differentiate themselves from their competitors. The adoption of the EGR technology will meet the two latter strategies. Cummins has had very varied performance over the past five years in converting their asset investment into profit. Their return on assets has also decreased from positive in 1997 to negative in 2001. This could be attributed to investing in the EGR technology and the dot-com crash. Although declining, Cummins still has the second largest market share of the total USA heavy-duty engines market. Customer satisfaction historically has had a direct correlation to fuel consumption and optimal performance. While this is still the case, some customers are now looking at the environmental features of a company's product. Cummins is potentially well placed for future market developments with regards to environmental standards. The move to EGR technology will not only meet the emission standards within the descent degree, but will also meet future standards in 2007. Cummins' sale per employee ratio has increased since 1997. This means that Cummins employees are starting to become more efficient, but not enough to address their profitability issue. Cummins' asset ratio turnover has decreased in 1997. This means that Cummins is generating less revenue per dollar of asset. It should be noted that Cummins' assets have significantly increased since 1997 and could be attributed to the development of the EGR technology. Cummins profitability has decreased considerably from 1997 to 2001. The dot-com crash has had a significant impact on this performance. Regardless of the hard economic times, the negative profit margin is a concern given Cummins market share. The negative profit margin can also be contributed to the high expenditures such as inventory and employees. 
Cummins engineers are certain that the EGR technology is necessary to achieve further emission reductions required in the future 2007 EPA emission standards. Cummins has already put significant R&D into the EGR technology. Cummins is in a strong position to implement the EGR technology with parts of the value chain such as suppliers already confirmed. In fact, if Cummins does not implement the EGR technology, then it needs to determine how to redirect the supply chain, modify manufacturing plans and develop a plan to cope with the non-conformance penalty costs. Currently, Cummins' market share issue within the heavy duty engine industry is that it's not profitable. Their competitors are going to continue with their value proposition of excellent fuel economy with modified engines that don't comply with the emission standards. Cummins' potential competitive advantage would be through the implementation and value proposition of the EGR technology. It would create a new customer segmentation within, within the industry, maintain similar distribution channels and allow Cummins to position the product differently to their competitors which would allow them greater image and branding opportunities and pricing options. Cummins has already closed down three plants and cut over a thousand jobs due to erosion in profit and a pronounced downturn in a number of markets. Cummins needs to capitalise on their asset turnover ratio. Cummins has already invested in technologies which integrate into the development of the EGR solution. Cummins' potential competitive advantage is that they have the ability to meet the EPA's pull forward deadline and the emission standards while a majority of their competitors won't. Cummins should also monitor and continue to lower cost structures with a focus on high cost areas such as plant and employees. Previously, Cummins had a significant human resource issue regarding their attitude and values. Cummins employees were engaged in developing their mission and corporate values which are now known as the Cummins Code of Business Conduct. Cummins competitive advantage is that they have a clear direction and buy-in from their employees and stakeholders. An emphasis was placed on a performance driven culture. This will assist with decision making. The values of integrity, innovation and corporate social responsibility will align with the EGR technology and the emission standards. Cummins' strengths are their employees' commitment and buy-in to the company's vision, the advancement on the EGR technology and its testing, and suppliers' willingness to provide parts for the EGR technology. Their weaknesses are the current status and profitability of the organisation, the declining market share, and potentially the poor fuel consumption rates within the EGR technology. There is great opportunity for Cummins to establish relationships with environmental, non-government organisations, invest in R&D to manufacture an engine that has lower fuel consumption rates and explore horizontal diversification in which EGR technology can be used in other industries. The main threats for Cummins are Congress influencing EPA to push out the timelines, losing market share from not producing a more fuel efficient engine and potentially competitors ambushing the EGR technology. Cummins is in a unique situation that its main competitor Caterpillar chose a different path in rejecting the pull forward requirements, instead lobbying government decision makers and marketing to customers in order to push back the time limit in which they had to reach the new NOx standards. This plays into the hands of Cummins as they are more advanced in the development of the technology required and could meet the consent decree without a need for delay. This being the case, it is recommended for Cummins to not to push for a delay in the consent decree and take advantage of its competitive advantage in early implementation to provide reassurance that pushing ahead with the development of the technology for lower NOx emissions is the correct path, enter into private discussions with the EPA to confirm the future direction of NOx emission standards, to reassure customers and decision makers that meeting a lower emissions level in the required time limit is the correct path, encourage the EPA to invest in an immediate marketing campaign, including lobbying politicians for support for the benefits of the reduced NOx levels, and to reduce risk of excessive focus on one market segment, Cummins should explore horizontal diversification in alternative industries in both the primary and tertiary sectors where their engine technology could be used. Such industries could include maritime, trains, mining, factories and defence segments. Thank you for listening to our presentation. 
are there any questions?